You do it this time. I do what? You do it this time. What am I doing? The intro. Welcome to the Roboots podcast nah, or the Super Robo Play podcast. You were just too nah. What? I, I tried to give you the mantle. I tried to pass it on. I was taking like, a sip out of my energy like drink, Batman. and no, you. I, I watched you. You were coaster, and you put the coaster down. You're like, don't want to get rings. I don't want to get rings don't on my get rings like a tree. Hello and welcome to the Robo Boots podcast. I my name is that. Alex Hamley, and with me, as always, is Jason Church. Hello, everyone. He is the co-host. Um, and this is episode one seventeen of the Robo Boots podcast. I realized you wouldn't know the numbers. No, I did, because I just watched the other one. It's episode eight on the Super Robo Play. Yes. Um, channel. Jason's got it now. Yeah, because the episode on the Super Robo Play channel is always one number ahead of the last digit of the Robo Boots so podcast. Screw yourself. Up. <laughs> Um, yeah. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I feel, I'm feeling good. I didn't sleep last night. Fucking 5 a.m. No shit you didn't sleep. You woke up at 8 a.m. 5 (laughs) a.m. I was sleeping here. Uh, no, there's crows on my, on my, like, windowsill. And there's two of them just... (laughs) Vigors. Yes, it was the Vigors. Uh, they were just going... Yeah. At it. At, w- at what time? Five in the morning. Yeah, just when the Bioshock announcement happens. Oh, shit. I don't think that's any coincidence. That's weird, dude. I don't like that. Uh, no, I just could not sleep. They would not stop just being fucking annoying. Uh, and I'd go up. I was, like, tapping on my window trying to get them. They didn't give a shit. They are like, fuck you. And they, ah! The old, they knew you couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, I, w- I was powerless inside my window. So I just laid back down and I couldn't get back to sleep. Um... But no, Bioshock, I was just looking at it, and uh, if you haven't heard, Bioshock Infinite has some new DLC that they announced today. They've got... uh, Clash of the Clouds. Clash of the Cloud, which is like this, I want to say horde mode, pretty much, but single-player horde mode. It's like there's waves of enemies that you have to fight in the same locations that already exist in the game, and there's challenges that you have to complete. It's similar to the, the challenge rooms for Bioshock 2 as well. Did they? Yes. Okay, that was so a DLC that they put up before they put out Minerva's Den. Yeah. So they had a challenge rooms thing. And it's similar to, um, like, Arkham does that as well. Um, Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I never played those. Yeah. Like, I knew of them, but I just, like, the, the idea of challenge rooms has never been appealing to me. To redo something I've already done in, like, the story campaign for fun. It's just, like, I don't know. It's just, it's sort of boring. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, the combat in Bioshock is a ton of fun. I really enjoyed it, but... Um, I don't know. I just, I don't think it's solid enough. Like maybe if you had to play with friends or something, uh, and it was like Mass Effect or Last of Us, where it's like, hey, now we have to like, okay, I, here's my loadout. That's your loadout. Now we have to somehow like come up with a strategy. Well, I, I think they initially were going to have DLC for this, and they ended up scrapping it. Um, yeah. I only think they're doing the Clash in the Clouds thing um, to just delay for the actual DLC that's coming out. They're like, let's give a people something that they can play. Is because they're going to have to keep waiting for the other stuff to come out. Yeah, because um, they also announced uh, a two-part story uh, DLC pack, which I think it's fourteen ninety-nine each if you don't have the season pass. Um, is how much is the Clash of the Clouds? Do you know? Five bucks. Is it five dollars? Yeah. Um, so it's cheaper, and it's like, hey, if you want to keep playing Bioshock, here's some new content. Yeah, which but it's is- like not story driven content but it's still stuff you can play yeah and waste a few hours on um it's like neither of us got the season pass so do you want to turn off that fan maybe it keeps like waving this what do i do just tr- uh hit the power switch over there um but no neither of us got the season pass and it's like clash of the clouds i don't think interests me Locked enough in. oh no i don't can... have i don't have enough room oh no take off your headphones for a second or yeah alex is trying to squirm his way over to the there you go, you got it. No, it, just, it kept waving, yeah, like sure. my pop filter. All right. um, but I don't think I'll get Clash of the Clouds. I'm not sure about you. Uh, it, it just doesn't really interest me enough. I don't think there's enough going on. It's like, if I were to replay Bioshock Infinite, I'd just go through the story mode again, which I haven't done also. Um, so, Bioshock eh. Infinite. Infinite. It's a nut you can play outside. In the clouds. Mm-hmm, in Colombia, uh huh. Um, but it's like maybe if they introduce this, if it does well, they'll introduce. Well, they're not going to do multiplayer, but maybe they'll do more maps or something. Like I don't know. It, it's a weird place for them to be in. The this Kotaku video that I was watching earlier, they were saying it is weird 
that people come to Bioshock for like story driven moments and how but to, they're doing that they are they doing are two parts it's just that that kind of stuff takes time it does and yeah Ken was saying that like the moment they finished Infinite they started working on the DLC mm-hmm. and clearly they need more time to do that yeah and it looks like they're trying to tell an interesting story from the looks of it oh yeah let's talk about that so the actual um proper story dlc buried at sea buried at sea which uh i'm sort of shocked that they're doing this i i actually thought i saw the trailer for it and i was like oh shit people are gonna be pissed that they're going back to rapture and they're gonna ruin it people love people yeah, love of course it they do. people love the first game yeah um it's like for me the whole little spoilers for bioshock infinite spoilers um the little tidbit of going to rapture at the end of the game it's like that was enough for me uh you know that was fine but i didn't realize that what they're doing is the dlc is like on the eve of rapture's collapse it's like december 31st 1958 right like that was the day before rapture just goes all hell um goes all goes all hell goes to hell so it's like that i think that is an interesting story but to me it i don't know i'm i'm torn because i booker and elizabeth are such interesting characters but i don't feel like they need to be in that rapture environment i feel like if they had different characters or something i, I don't know it, it just seems weird to me it's like alternate universe people like booker people like elizabeth and people like that troy baker troy yeah, baker they do troy baker courtney draper what courtney draper's the girl but elizabeth oh right they like him right. so uh I don't know why not why change something that works and clearly they're changing things about like Elizabeth looks different yeah and that was the beauty of uh, this again spoilers for Bioshock that you have all these infinite possibilities that yeah this can be something that happens because yeah they've created it in such a way um, and this yeah and one part you're going to be playing as Booker the other part you're going to be playing as Elizabeth which is cool yeah. like, I like that it's like okay it's like I could have even had the entire game maybe play as Elizabeth or in Booker's there. I don't know. Just do something different. But I have faith in them that they'll do something interesting both, com- both combat-wise and story-wise. It's like the end of that trailer, they show Booker. He has the little flame. Um, what were they called in Bioshock? Um, not Vigors. They were called... Uh, anyway, whatever the power is for that. The inject- plasmids. Plasmids. It's like, okay, so it looks like we're going to be introduced to new powers as well maybe we get some of the old plasmids back like b hand and shit like that um but yeah it's just it's i don't know it's weird i mean it'll be interesting but i still my gut reaction is just like uh i don't know these characters like i'm so um i'm used to these characters in such a different way so that seeing them in this alternate universe is like it reminds me of weird campy like fanfic in a way but i have high hopes it'll be good you're a bigger Bioshock fan. So. What? You're a bigger, like, original Bioshock fan. So how I do you think that answer that question? That, okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Ken Levine. Trust trust in him. Uh, base Ken. Trust in Base Ken. Yeah. Uh, I think it looks interesting. I think it'll be fun to have Big Daddy's back again. Uh, well, yeah. They showed, like, the little sisters all in a row before they're, like little sisters it's like interesting and again this is something to like fill in the story and tie things together yeah um it'll be interesting to see how they explain well they're like 47 years or 37 years into forward, the future yeah, into the future how they explain that if they just explain it as oh they they went through a tear it's like oh i don't even know if they're gonna call attention to it i think it's just gonna be like here's a story like here's a story with these characters that's it it's just another thing it's like okay because again spoilers the whole trailer it's like some people are saying it's like huh elizabeth is is being very flirtatious yeah with booker and it's like old boy it's like well uh is in this universe is she still his daughter Wait, that's the only what makes sense it's like how how does this work and the whole end of the game it's like no you close all the infinite possibilities like you close that singularity so it's like i i don't know we'll see we shall see. But if it's its own separate thing in a little bubble and they're just like, hey, here's a story we have to tell. It's like, okay, cool. It could be something maybe even along the lines of like the moment you meet Elizabeth, you both go through a tear. The same way she opens up a tear and it's Paris. Yeah. You opens up the tear and all of a sudden they're in rapture. And they've yeah. not quite met yet. Like that's why they're just meeting right there in that trailer. Yeah. And they didn't seem to know each other. Yeah. So it, it'll be interesting. It's like. Or something along the lines of um, the Lutesses are like all right booker let's do this um but she had already gone through a tear 
to Rapture. So the mission goes from like yeah going to Columbia to save this girl, and instead it's going to Rapture and saving yeah, this girl. Yeah. This is just like an alternate. Like, what if she went through and she's in Rapture now? Yeah, what if she actually went through a tear? Because it's like she's been able to open them her entire life, but she never... This almost seems to be very film noir from, like, how she looks with her hair. And he's in a detective hat. The little detective hat. It's like, okay, that's cool. I can get down with that. Yeah, so it seems to be film noir And if it's like that, then it's going to be like, oh, it's just another sort of, like, let's rescue the girl. Yeah. Um, But it'll be interesting to see as well how they tie things into, like, Bioshock 2. Like, when Bioshock 1 came out, they didn't have any of the Bioshock 2 with um, Sophia Lamb and stuff. They didn't have any of that planned out. Yeah. So they could include, like, little seeds, like, back into this, like, of trying to tie Bioshock 2 back into the first one. Into the first one. Yeah. So I think it'll be cool. Um, Did they give a date when that comes out? I think they were saying in another month or something, month or two? Didn't they say? No. Uh, um, I don't think there was just like oh later. That's yeah, it yeah. Was. It's just like oh, just, you they, know. they're gonna. What if they tie in like System Shock in there too, and they tie everything together? Did you play more of System Shock? I I, I can. It doesn't have controller support. Right, right. I don't right. have a mouse. It's too much. Yeah, it, yeah. It'd be too too much. I saw that was on. What was it the Steam Summer Sale? And I was close to picking How it up. How much was it? I, I can't remember. It oh. it wasn't enough where it was like well, instant don't, sale. Don't because <laughs> Chris gifted it to me on GOG and that has no DRM, so oh, I can just give you a link to download it. Okay, yeah, yeah. we'll just do that because it's like I think that'd be fun to play. Well, that's um, the reason Chris got it for us, and it's like yeah, if if you're probably better with keyboard and mouse, and I was playing it, and yeah, it was fun. It's Bioshock. Yeah, it's Bioshock. Um, it handles differently. It's a lot harder, I, uh, but. It's like I'm just not proficient with keyboard and mouse enough to yeah, do it yeah. do it well enough. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll do a Super Robo play on it. I yeah, don't know. Spoilers, we maybe will do a Super Robo play on System Shock 2. Yeah. Which is a classic. And I, from what I played, I enjoyed it. It's just like there comes a time where there's so many enemies. It's like Bioshock, you're being swamped by enemies. Yeah. But I'm just not fucking fast enough to yeah. play with my mouse. Like you're with the controller. Them. Yeah. So and I couldn't figure out a way to like Jimmy in controller support. It's weird because it's like you think they would do that and maybe i'm just stupid and couldn't figure it out yeah um i had no problems with any other games yeah i'm trying to think there probably is some way or some other workaround for it there's a lot of programs that do that um what they did for um cube world yeah but yeah i could try that with that but even that's not perfect no no it's it's you're trying to manipulate a controller to like a keyboard it's like i don't know it works enough but i have it yeah even like i use uh on your laptop i have like my playstation 3 controller plugged in and i yeah. use that as a mouse so i can like lean back and still like if i'm gonna watch girl and log on or something yeah just like oh vlc and press x to pause play and all that yeah but even like doing little things like okay minimize just trying to, like, get to, <laughs> trying to get to the right oh, point close uh, fuck uh do you watch more girl and log on? i'm only on episode six or seven okay. they just got the little face god boy the yeah. guy with the kid, little kid with the ponytail. They got him. Um, oh, shoot. That was the first episode where it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's... You were saying, no, you're saying like the other episode prior to that was the one with all this, the 16 face fuzzballs. Oh, no, I, not that one. <laughs> because I was like, that's the episode on, I'm on. You're like, oh, that's where it gets I thought, good. I thought it was the, the face god one. No, and I was, I was like watching it. And I'm like, yeah, that was like a good <laughs> anime episode, but it's like a ridiculous episode. <laughs> yeah, with the fuzzballs. We're going to eat them. Oh, oh no, they're actually a uh, beast fan. Ooh. Well, and what's his name? Uh, Kamina is being like so weird that episode where he's just like yes. tossing boulders and he's just like, what did he keep saying? He was just like, oh, I can't remember. He had like just one thing he kept saying to Simon about just like. No, he's like, no, combination. He wouldn't explain, like, what he was talking oh, about. he was throwing boulders, yeah. and he's just like, yeah, combination, combination. Yeah. And, and then Simon's just like, I don't know what wh- the- What do you mean by that? And finally, Simon's like, oh, I understand. And he's, like, doing, like, this little dance to dodge them. And uh, Kamina's like, well, that's not what I meant. <laughs> that's like, not what I was talking about. And then finally, he just, like, jumps onto his head, and it's like, oh, you just wanted him to be, like, flamboyant with it. <laughs> like, yes. you are. That's it. <laughs> that's all it was. It's and like... even his, like, message of just, like, was nonsense. It was like, <laughs> a man's combination is is so <laughs> it's so, so important, isn't it? And the 16 face guy's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's like, that's where that anime is, like, it's so much fun to watch because it's poking fun at all like Power Rangers or like old mech stuff of like combination. How they, it's just so over the top when really it's like, no, it would just be okay. Got to fucking combine now to fight this guy. It's like, I don't know. It, it's fun. But no, the face got episode. It's like, that's where it's like, oh, interesting. That's a, it reminds me of like almost 
Cowboy Bebop has that too. Like yeah. I think like Cowboy Bebop's first episode is really strong. Yeah, stronger than um like Gurren Lagann's is good, but like Cowboy Bebop is like classic it, and it'll, it'll draw you in on the first episode. Yeah, but uh, Cowboy Bebop will have episodes where it's just like. Oh, that was a fun, like, anime episode. Oh, let's have a, a episode where everyone takes mushrooms and goes yeah. crazy. Well, no, that's that's an episode that also has some emotional stuff. But I'm saying, like, um, there are episodes where it's just, like, oh, it's silly, this episode. Yeah. And the next episode, it's there's something, like, really heart-wrenching. Yeah. Um, and that was the first one of Gurren Lagann where it was like, okay, no, that was, like, it felt like a Cowboy Bebop type episode. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, and um, I, I really like the character of Roshu, I think his name is. Um, he gets really interesting. But, uh... No, yeah, have fun with that. Have fun with uh, watching this from now on, because it's gonna. It, you're at the point now of just like, I have to watch all sixteen episodes now of this, and oh, there goes my entire evening. Yeah, the problem is I watch them on your on your laptop plugged in my TV, and my room gets so hot that I'll just be like, "Fuck off, I'm going to sleep." Yeah. Um, in the Cooks episode of Skins was the other day, but mm. I haven't. I have that downloaded, but I haven't watched. You haven't it yet. watched it yet, though. Are you going to wait for the second one to come out? Just like No, I, I, I didn't have time. I was playing uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. I was having more fun doing that. Beat all of the DLC stuff, and I'm on New Game Plus. So now you're going to rack up them souls, do some new vidies? I have like 200,000 right now, um, and nah, I still... Nah. You need 8 million. Yeah, I know. I, have, I need 8 million. <laughs> I have like Artorius' soul, Gwyn's soul, and Manus' soul all just sitting in my thing. Yeah. You know, just be like, consume, consume. I don't know if I want to make something with them yet. What can um, you make with them? Manus, I know you can do the... You don't do magic stuff, though, do you? You know, you can also make the Manus Great Sword or whatever. There's a sword that you can make with that. Is there? I believe so. Oh. Um, I was even thinking, um, mm. we don't have to, but doing some Dark Souls Super Robo Play um, and doing them like... PvP! Yeah, exactly. Like, doing a little PvP. I'm in New Game Plus now, and yeah. it'd be really easy to connect. So, doing, like... It'd be different than our regular episodes because it wouldn't be all one seamless thing. It'd almost be like a clip show. Yeah. But it would be like doing PvP things just to see how it goes. Yeah. And also it would be Ornstein stuff because um, I'd record that and then do post commentary over top of the clips. Mm. So it'd be killing different. Two... It'd be like different dynamics, like us doing live stuff on ours and then yeah. you doing it'd like be two post birds stuff. with one stone. Like I'm right there. That'd so be fun. We can I... we can give it a whirl. I've like never really done PvP. I like do it rarely. I'll do like um, what is it? Forest guard stuff every now and then. But mm, we can see. Um, I was in. There's lots of great PvP in the Artorias of the Abyss stuff. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I went to the kiln and because I beat the game yesterday and beat Gwen. But uh, I got invaded when I was in the kiln. Or no, I saw a red soapstone sign. So I yeah. brought a guy in to duel me, and yeah, he yeah. was uh, like cosplaying as or RPing as one of the painting guardians. Okay. And he came in, and I just kept spinning around in the circle, like, super fast, like, as fast as I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was confused. Um, but he, did, like, didn't approach me because he didn't know what I was up to. <laughs> but I'd, I'd already summoned a white phantom. Oh, I no. Was, I was just confused that he was, like, doing this diversion tactic <laughs> while a phantom came in. Like, I summoned the red one, and I saw the white one. I'm like, I want to watch these two fight. Yeah. <laughs> so I summoned the second <laughs> one. And that's when... Um, they both started freaking out because, like, he saw that he was coming up through the ground. So the red one stayed, like, right behind the white one so he could try to get the backstab. Oh, come on. But no, but the, well, because it's like he's two, two versus one. He's just trying to survive. Yeah. Um, but then the white guy, they just start, like, fighting. Um, and I just keep spinning around <laughs> watching them fight. Um, and they're fighting. Let's so, Beyblade! And the, the painting guardian was, like, beating the shit out of the, my white phantom. Yeah. Um, but then finally when, like, the white phantom started winning... The red one like ran away and used the humanity to heal. So I was like, "Well, fuck!" I was yeah. like, "Fuck that!" I'm gonna heal my white phantom. Yeah. It's just like Pokemon battles. <laughs> I was like, "Well, if he's gonna go heal himself, I'll heal. I'll heal my Pokemon." Um, but then he's over there and he's straight up just like role playing. Um, the the painting guardian. Are they he like starts, yeah, he starts throwing, but I realize um they're not regular throwing knives; they're the poisoned ones. Oh, so he's trying to poison. Um. But I mean, he does that once, does that twice to my guy. And yeah. then he does it to me. I was like, no, no, no. I'm off limit. You yeah. can't attack a traitor. <laughs> and I start running full speed at him. And I go for the backstab. Just backstab him. And he's yeah. like, he has no health. And he starts like flipping away, flipping away, flipping away. Yeah. Um, and then he uses another humanity. And I keep like, that goes on for a while. Of And now my white phantom is just watching me fight. He's what? Not, he's not helping me. <laughs> um, but you know, we eventually kill the painting guardian. And... 
the the white phantom does one of those like collapsing sort of like bows, bows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah um and then i booted him out <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna fight a uh, gwyn with uh, him on the kiln so i went to go because i got like thirty thousand souls yeah went and leveled up came back and i saw the red soapstone sign again yeah. it was the same guy so i'm like <laughs> i'm gonna bring him back yeah <laughs> i did the same thing i was just spinning around in a circle this time he was having none of it <laughs> <laughs> he was pissed and he comes at me and immediately as he approaches me boom i go for the backstab because i was just like spinning around can't, and i yeah you... I was, you can't get a backstab but i did it in such a way where i don't immediate backstab and then he got up and i burned him with pyromancy which is making a return oh no return of pyromancy are you doing pyromancy again um i just added it to the thing because i didn't feel like spending all my souls yeah so i've maxed out that with great combustion but uh, he didn't he didn't see that one coming lit him on fire yeah the phantoms i was using uh to fight manis it was weird um i brought a guy in to fight artorius with me mm-hmm. and he was using like great chaos fireball or whatever uh and then later, when I went to go fight Manus, that guy was down there again. Painting Guardian? No, no, no. The guy that helped me throw oh, the great fireballs with yeah, Artorius, yeah. he was down there for Manus. And I didn't ask him to, like, hey, come downstairs to, like, two bonfires ahead. Yeah. And go there. Um, Just by coincidence. Yeah, and also, Weird. the you can summon, like, right outside of Artorius, there's a bonfire, and you yep. can summon for there and take the guys all, all the way down yeah. to Manus. Um but you get the, you get a bonfire basically right before you go into the abyss section. So yeah. I booted the guy out and um, lit the bonfire, mm-hmm. and then I went off to like go fight Calamite and all that. So it's like lots of time had transpired. He from... was just helping people out. No, I guess. but like the guy that came with me from after Artorius all the way down to like where Manus was, that was a different guy. His name was like Aaron or something. Aaron Aaron Aaron, Aaron Jaeger. Aaron Proxy or some shit like that. But anyways, like. The two people that I had to go fight Manus with, one of them was the guy I fought Artorius with, and the other one was the one I went all the way down to Manus with. So it was yeah. two phantoms that I had already played with. Alternating. Um, and I summoned uh, Sif, and you could summon him too. So yeah. So it's three yeah. versus one for Manus. Yeah. And one of our guys died. Um, oh, and Sif got your back. Well, yeah, Manus can be difficult. Uh, he's easy to dodge, but he can be really aggressive, and if he goes aggro on one of your guys, he can kill you. Yeah. So one of our guys died, but uh, no, we beat Manus. Yeah, um, I'll need to go back and play through that again. Uh, I'm enjoying Demon Souls a lot right now, though. Like, I'm just going and playing that on my other characters because uh, they're all like in the exact same level range. I didn't plan this, but it's like this is always the point in Demon Souls where I'll get to like I've beaten most of the game. It's just like finishing a few of them, and I just stop playing. I don't know why. I just get bored, or I move on to a different game or something. So. I'm looking forward to us actually completing Demon Souls for uh, Super Robo Play because it's like, no, oh, that's a fun game. And uh, I don't know, my build right now is just bizarre. I've never really done this before. I've just like, I think I'm at 35 strength, like 31 endurance and 18 vitality. Like, it's just this weird, defensive, powerful build. Yeah, my guy on Dark Souls is like 55 endurance. Yeah. Um, and it's still not high enough. I need to get it to like 60. To get armor? No, I want to do the flip ring. Oh, um, yeah. So as it is now, like I can, I could do it if I, um, I have wolf ring and Havel. If I took off the wolf ring and put the flip ring, I could do, I could do flips. Yeah, but then you need that poise. Yeah, I need the poise. So I want to be able to get to a point where I can take off Havels and then replace that with dark wood grain ring and yeah. then flip around. Yeah. Um, and I'm really close. Yeah. And I, I've been using no gloves for a long time, and I just added gloves for Gwyn. Um, just for that fight because I wanted a little bit extra poise. Yeah. Um, so it's a matter of, like, I can't do it with gloves. I need way too much endurance. Yeah. So I have to take off the gloves for that. But, it's uh, so bizarre how those games just, like, we've been playing them for two two years now, like two plus years. And it's how they just, they still hold up and they're the most fun things just to jump on when you're not really thinking about stuff. It's just like, oh, I just want to play something for fun, not really have to worry about it. It's like, no, you always go back. It Like, I used to be like that with team fortress 2 where i wouldn't play it a ton but if i just had like an hour or something it's like no i'm gonna play team fortress 2 or something that's what Uh, people do with call of duty yeah that's what the people just have like go-to games that really or like that's what mobile games are yeah um but no like it's weird like that's why some people have such problems with dark souls and demon souls Mm -hmm. but to me it's like i don't even pay attention when i'm playing or it's like i'm listening to podcasts like i'm paying enough attention that i don't fuck up but it's like I'm just not taking up like uh yeah um, which is good because it's like those games and it's hard I always try to explain this um 
which is like game mechanics and it's like how solid those game mechanics are and it's like no you can't play other games because it's like this game just handles so well and i think that's like you were saying like people play call of duty or um halo for the same reason where it's just like the games handle so well that once you become accustomed to them it's like you don't need to think i was fucking watching like some highlight clip of like it was i just saw it on like youtuber it was like Modern Warfare 3, like, blah, 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 crazy... No, it was Adam who sent me a fucking, like, a clip that was just on. He was going through his, uh... Like, he found, like, 400 gigabytes worth of stuff. And he just had, like, what? an old clip from Black Ops that he sent to me. So I watched it. Of him it. playing? Yeah, of him playing. Because he had, like, a really good run. So I was watching yeah. it. And I was like... I had, like, weird flashbacks to, um... Like, <laughs> to Nom? To when I used to play Black <laughs> Ops. Because I remembered the map and everything. Um, <clears throat> and then I went and watched, like, a clip of some, like, highlight thing of, like some crazy life that some guy had on on not black ops but like the latest game which i guess is black ops 2 yes um and it's like man i hate the way that game looks so much just like how people play and it's just like i can see why other people will watch this and go like well what the fuck is this like there's so much like jittery camera movement and just like looking around super fast and shooting over here shooting over here yeah and then yeah. you look at like us play last of us where it's just like oh, that game looks like pretty even the multiplayer is pretty where it's like it's not some crazy like oh i gotta have my gamer fuel and just like yeah. and there's so much like shit on the screen all the fucking time of just like a billion points over here and oh now yeah. you have this and oh, oh, call, time to get the call, missile. Yeah, call in the airstrike it's just, like yeah. there's so much shit where it's like i remember hey playing, man that's real war I, I remember playing this game all the time and like have after having like some years off from not playing it looking at it now it's like this is fucking bullshit this is like the ugliest game on the planet <laughs> and it's like no it's like a drug it's like i can see why people get so it's like gambling it's honestly the same thing of just like the slot machine and the bright lights and the flashing and the spinning it's just like well, when you're always winning something when you're playing yes um yes uh what's was like grand theft auto call of duty for any amount of time where it's always like oh you kill somebody oh you got some stuff oh you it's... unlocked a new emblem you won something it's i've like... never known it's literally the exact same gambling stuff like it's the exact same methodology of just like no you constantly just reward players yeah. and throw things at them and just like sensory overload and you become like addicted to that well, high. and that's what good mobile games do as well where it's like <clears throat> yeah. you play a little bit oh now you have a new power up oh yeah. you have a new this new level over here a new bonus level oh you have a new character and you have a new thing yeah little little incentivizations that other games try to like copy um and that's why some games i guess like dark souls you don't feel like you're making enough progress and that's what people will say that, like, yeah that's the one complaint yeah. i hear where people go like well i don't want to i don't want to sit down for three hours and not and make no progress yeah it's like well then don't make the same mistakes you keep making <laughs> or the fact that like you lose stuff yeah like, like no games don't yeah, do exactly. that anymore there's a punishment for fucking up but at the same time well no you can get that all back yeah i i was playing demon souls earlier and i was doing uh one three and i had like i don't know maybe fifteen thousand souls and i died at the penetrator i he i got caught against the wall somehow and he lifted me up with his one hit kill i was like okay whatever i'll go rush back and i just like wasn't paying attention and those uh those two dogs killed me at the beginning and i was just like i was just being lazy i'm like i'm just gonna run past them and what was that ah fuck i'm dead and it's just like eh. it's like okay fifteen thousand souls whatever it's like that's what dogs at the very beginning of one three, uh-huh. uh, there's those two dogs oh, okay. in the courtyard. For some reason, you're like seeing penetrator, and you said two dogs. I'm like, is he thinking of Capra? No, 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 no. Capra has two dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, where I was just like, you just, I don't know. You have like a lapse every now and then. I'm just like, I'm not gonna lock on. I'm I, just gonna like roll. Oh fuck! I summoned some people for Gwen, and well, I summoned one guy because I just saw one there. I was like, well, why not? Yeah. And like he had his thing right by there, so I summoned him in. And he comes in and he was wearing like havels and it was like, all right, like he had a huge club. And he's like, okay, let's do this. And then I just like get completely naked. And I just like <laughs> stare at him. And then he, he looks at me and then he gets completely naked and then he shrugs. <laughs> so we go into we fight, go. we go into fight Gwen, the final boss of the game with no armor. Um, immediately the phantom just gets like walloped by Gwen and dies. <laughs> yeah. And I have like no armor, so I'm fighting Gwen. And I managed to get Gwen down to like half health, but. Um, with no armor, like two hits from him, I'll kill you. Yeah. Uh, but no, then I did it again with like two other phantoms where I just got naked and I kept like struggling, <laughs> struggling. just like, come on guys, come, come on. on. And they were just like getting mad and they were just like doing all this, uh, like getting upset. So I booted both of them out and it's like, 
if these guys aren't willing to have some fun with it, what's the yeah. point? Like, I lost, like, 60,000 souls. Well, it's like, at the end of the day... Yeah, it's like, yeah. what does it matter? I'm just trying to have a good time. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's the thing. It's, like, I don't know. It's People have weird ideas when they go to play Dark Souls for the first time because they hear, oh, it's such a difficult game. Well, even the marketers, like, they promote that. Just, like, prepare to die. Yeah. I'm like, ugh. I wish they wouldn't do that. Go beyond death. Go beyond That's death. That's a good one. What? What does that That's mean? That's a good one. What I does like that, that mean? Go beyond death. Um, but yeah, it's just like, you know, everyone just have fun with the game. Just treat it, you know, just like, just try it out. Try it out and don't get so worried about like... Super cheap all the time on Steam. It's oh, always yeah. like seven bucks on I Steam. I was so tempted to buy it and it's like, I don't need this on Steam. I really don't. What, for like the mods? Maybe. Well, it looks best on PC. It looks good, but then it's just like, eh, I, I just didn't feel like and it. And also, if you're getting a new TV and stuff, getting to play PC games on a big screen like that. Yeah, we'll see. Um, depends Especially on... with Adam's stuff, like, because I've been, I have that laptop, this laptop, and I've been playing Fallout on that. Yeah. Fallout New Vegas, and it's like, oh, even on your laptop, which is old, and Fallout New Vegas, which is old, it's like such a smooth frame rate. Yeah, yeah. No loading times, because there's no disc, um... There's some load, loading times occasionally if you're just fast traveling. Yeah. But um, no going like, like Gus was talking about how you go in a door and it would take time to load and that. But <laughs> Gus saves too much. Yeah, that's his, <laughs> that's his problem. But uh, no, even like playing because I, I was playing Fallout Three on PlayStation Three a few yeah. months ago, and yeah, having like going out and it's maybe it's like a five second load time, but there's none of that. It's going out uh, outdoors and stuff. So I played, I'm playing a bit of that. That's fun. Yeah. New Vegas. Um. Because I got Skyrim on my PC, so it's like... I'm actually looking forward to that. Because uh, Skyrim on PS3... I don't know, I just... It was that same thing. I just, like, I stopped. I don't know why. There's just no reason for it. I was just like, eh, I've played enough of this. I've not touched the main story whatsoever. Like, nope. there's that mission where it's like, go up the mountain and talk to the Greybeards. So I was like, nah. I did that, and I, after that, I was just like... Well, they give you the, eh. the tombs, the tombs. Lith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I actually eventually did, but I, I played, like, a good 40 hours not doing that. Yeah. Um, and have, like, maxed out sneak and maxed out archery. Yeah. Um, and also, like, my helmet boosts archery. My Like, everything I have boosts archery and boosts sneak. So I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm at a point where I'm so incredibly overpowered, and I'm not even, like, maxed out for my level. No. Um, and that's always the fun of those games. <clears throat> well, I love that New Vegas, though. Um, all, like, you get these perks at the beginning where it's, like, well, Tell me a bit about yourself, Doc, whatever his name is. John Dick. Doc Marshall, I think it is. 12 inches long. Uh, but you have these, like, perks that you can get. But each one has, like, a positive and a negative. And yeah. I thought that was interesting because, like, the original Fallout 3 doesn't have that. It's no. always, like, a boost. But it would be, like, um, during the day, your stats are increased. But during the night, your stats are decreased. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Or there's ones where it's, like... Against men, you will have a bonus, but against women, you will have a de decrease. Doesn't Skyrim do that as well? I swear to God, Skyrim does that in Skyrim some effect. Skyrim came after. There may be some, but not to the same degree, I don't yeah. think. Um, but there was, like, a whole set of those ones. And the, there was one that was, like, I can't It was, like, Young Forever. It was some reference to Logan's run. Um, but I couldn't figure out what it meant. Like, I had to look it up to, un like, fully understand it. But it was just, like... <laughs> You get all these bonuses, but the moment you reach level 30 or whatever it is, you lose everything. Oh. Um, like, you lose all those bonuses you've had. I can't remember what it was. That's but, weird. Um, I'm sure the New Vegas fans know better than me all the, the ups and downs of those. And I tried to pick the ones that were the most, like, no negative. Yeah, no, like, no negative. No, no, like, I, because you can also go, I don't want any of them. Um, hmm. You only get to choose two. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's still more you need to unlock and all that. But I was like, eh. Um, Maybe I'll the, play New Vegas. Yeah, New Vegas is a lot of fun. Because I, I, I like I played through Fallout Three up to like the ending point before, because they had the whole ending of like, oh, once you Adam has all the DLC for New Vegas too. Does he? Yeah. Maybe I'll play because I tried doing the Elder Scrolls. Um, what is it, Oblivion? And I like I played through probably ten hours of that, and I was having fun. But it's just like that's a really fun game. I love the world of that. But after playing things like Fallout, things like Skyrim, it is a bit tedious to go back I and play Oblivion that. I think Oblivion is like a lot better than Skyrim, and I think that's a lot of people's. Just... It is and it isn't. It's a better uh, RPG. Skyrim is so um, like 
it is it's a much better rpg but i was going into oblivion just to like have fun in the world and i think there's more things to do you'd have and... fun with new vegas then because I, yeah. I found find skyrim like yeah you can do that but there isn't enough that interests me in skyrim it's very similar everywhere yeah and it's like you'll go into like a dungeon you get something and it's like yeah this is not better than what i have and i'm at a point where i have so much money because i have all these fucking potions mm-hmm. um like to the point where it's like uh, my house is just filled with like a chest Things. filled with no filled with potions yeah that's like if i need money go get potions sell the potions have more money yeah. so i have uh, like limitless sum, sums of ca- cash because you have that way of like you go into one of these alchemy places you buy all of their ingredients <laughs> you make stuff with it and you sell the potions back to them for yeah. way more especially if your barter's high um but no <laughs> they're new- just watching you like that's like going huh. that's like going into a grocery store buying like all the vegetables and buy all this an amazing salad and going like do you want to buy the salad for a hundred dollars and they've watched you yeah they've watched they, you. they watch you the entire time because you're doing it right in front of them <laughs> and you're like wait do you want to buy this salad for a thousand dollars and they're just like i, I yeah, think we do yeah that's that's, that's a good, great that's a good salad idea. oh <laughs> No, and then they don't know. They don't eat it. They they oh, yeah. they, they put sell it. it they yeah. put it on a salad. <laughs> <laughs> All their stuff gone, but they have that salad. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we're selling salad now for a thousand dollars. And then you come back the next day and you do the same thing. Yeah. They have all new things. I'm just gonna take it's, all this. In Skyrim, it's like three days. So you just like you go outside and you just stand there for three days, <laughs> staring then, into their window. Then you go back inside and do it again. And they're just uh, he's still outside, dude. He hasn't moved. The yet. thing I like most about New Vegas is that I don't know the setting at all. Like I know Fallout Three pretty well. I know yeah. Oblivion pretty well. Yeah. Um, I know Skyrim well enough, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know. Yeah, and like my final like like the last sort of play of Skyrim was just me going all around the like a map and this like um I can't like a spiral, spiral. pattern like going around the edges oh a drill yeah drill drill the young man's heart uh, the, the the man young man realizes destiny yes um just like going all the way around the edges and there was nothing that could ever kill me like dragon no problem yeah anything that I would come across would be no problem to kill yeah. so I was like running out of things to do but New <clears throat> Vegas I don't know the setting at all like. I was walking around, walking around, and it's different, too, because I ran into a place that was just, like, filled with death claws. I'm only, like, level 3, and death claws are, like, 15. So it's kind of different in the sense that where it's like, don't go here yet. Interesting. Um, but the other games don't quite have that. They do for some. They scale better, though. Yeah, but th- it's, like, it's almost smarter because <clears throat> uh, Oblivion, you'll get to a point where it's, like, Oh, now everything's really, really, really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're, you'll just hit the level. But um, no, I was going here, and it was just like filled with death claws. I'm like, I literally can't go here because they're so aggressive and they'll chase me down. Yeah. There was one that I couldn't ditch, and I wasted all my bullets and all my stim packs healing and trying to kill him. And I was only like level three, and finally, running across the world. Fuck. Finally, I did kill him, and I got like <clears throat> thirty experience from it, which is nothing. Nothing. Um, and got whatever the death claws drop, like their meat. fucking their claws or some shit. Claw meat. Um, but no, I remember I was exploring, and I went, "What is that off in the distance?" Mm-hmm. And I see like these two huge statues, like off in the distance. And it was just like that's the fun of that game of like, "What is that? Let me go explore over there." Yeah. And sure enough, there's like a settlement up there. Um. Where it's like, yeah, there's mission people that give you missions and all that. Hmm. Um, there's just like a big like gate too that you can't go through yet. So it's like, oh, I want to go through there too. Yeah, so I'm maybe I'll maybe this. I'll do these people's missions because um, I want to see what's over on that side of the fence. Or maybe I'll just murder everyone in the settlement. That's the for o- fun. That's the only people I haven't like killed everybody. Oh no. Um, the very first town you come across, I killed everybody except for Trudy and Sh- Sugar Snaps or whatever her fucking name is. Yeah. Um, because they sell stuff. They don't even sell good stuff. I killed the store owner, and I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I, it's like I, I keep running out of stim packs, and that's the thing you need most. So it's like I feel like an actual scavenger of just like I'm going in places hoping to find something so I can heal myself. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, they're filled with fucking bandits or whatever <clears throat> powder powder gangers they call them. Powder gangers. Yeah, huh. they, there's like and there's the the cons and all this uh, like great cons they call themselves like yeah. K H A N Star Trek. Con. Yeah. Uh, Did you ever see the new Star Trek? No. No, you didn't. Right. I saw that with my dad. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good that's movie. Why, that's why I didn't see it. Good movie. Just wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. Yeah. Fun um, movie. Only God Forgives is out on VOD. The new Gosling film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, was, I saw it on PlayStation Store. It was like 
but hey, it's still in theaters, but you can rent it right now. It's like a, smart. It's yeah. like we they need to start doing that more. Give us movies on demand when the movie comes out. Why not? They won't do it for big budget things, <clears throat> but for small art, art house films like that. Well, it's like yeah, I don't know where that's playing in Vancouver. I'd like to see that, but yeah. oh, it's only like five dollars to like rent. You can't buy it and own it. No, but it's just like no. Let let me watch. The reason it I don't my... do that is because of piracy. It's all over Pirate Bay now. So it's like oh, yeah, I'm not gonna pay five dollars. Yeah, sorry, well, that's sorry, like Gosling. Convenience. If they if it was an easier service and it gave you more stuff, it's sorry, like... Gosling. You'll just have to live with your beautiful face and without my money. <laughs> Gosling wouldn't make any money off you. He'd huh? make like some probably, but. There wouldn't be much money in that. Millions. Millions? Trillions. Mm, if that was the so. tri- if that was a trillion dollar grossing movie, I'm sure Gosling would see some of that money. Maybe. They awesome. just announced, you see what I sent you on Twitter? Yes. I, weren't we Fowl. just talking about that? I guess. We're always just talking about everything. Yeah. Uh, Artemis Fowl is coming out. Well, and the big news, and <laughs> the news that always, like foreshadows that is that the like the Weinsteins at Disney are getting back together. Yeah. Because they had a famous falling out over um like Weinsteins used to run Miramax, Disney bought Miramax, yeah. Then Disney's forced the Weinsteins out of Miramax. Miramax is now defunct. Yeah. The Weinsteins have their own company, the Weinstein Company. Um and for those who don't know, the Weinsteins are the Jews that run Hollywood. Yes. Um they run all, <laughs> all the award shows they will Yes. They they're good at picking out like awards movies and like making projects like that um that's they know why, how to make money yeah miramax is not, <laughs> not quite that it's like they're good at getting awards movies um miramax in the 90s had films like pulp fiction like big indie films clerks they're part of yeah the, the indie movement sort of rising into the mainstream yeah uh but yeah the weinstein company has been making great films but it's like you can't it's like as much as they make good films you kind of everybody like hates harvey weinstein because he's just like the the prototypical smarmy like Hollywood producer kind of guy. Yes. Um. But like, and that's why Disney didn't want to do business with this guy anymore. But now they're getting back together to do this Artemis Fowl thing. Um. Because the way I guess it is, it must be like, um, the Weinstein Company owns the rights. Um, I believe. But they don't so. have the yeah they don't have the money to do it, so they get Disney's help for the money and they make something with it. Which is so weird. It's like I guess that'll be a big thing but it's like artemis fowl like we talked about was like a big thing around the same time when harry potter books were coming out um it's like and harry potter got movies and got crazy big and artemis fowl is a huge series it's got like 20 million plus uh books sold throughout the world but it's like i feel like it it's time has passed it's like it's it's as simple as that it's gonna come out and it will probably do no better or worse than the percy Percy jackson Jackson, films Where it's like, I think those were big books as well for kids. Yeah, they were. Um, and the it's first like, one, and they've got a second one coming out. Which I saw, which I was like, oh, I, I didn't, whatever, uh, what's it called? Something about lightning, or I don't know. That's the first one, The Lightning Thief. Oh. Percy Jackson, and The Olympians, The Lightning Thief. That's the t- that's why <laughs> the, that movie I, failed. Yeah. It's called Percy Jackson. Yeah. And who can- <laughs> and Gigantic title. This one is starring a different person? It's a girl? No, same guy. Uh, the Logan, trail, the trailer Logan I Roman. saw was full of girls. Oh well, maybe they're trying to pull in the <clears throat> pull in the boys. Yeah, um, but um, no, it's the Logan Lerman whose star power has increased a bit because he was in that Perks of Being a Wallflower film. Yeah, so ladies like him now. I like I've got the Arnold's Fowl books up there. I don't remember a goddamn thing about those books except they go underground. They're little gremlin trolls and the, why not, the codes. Why not Silverwing? Why not Sunwing movies? They made those. No, they didn't. They made a TV show. Oh, they made the owl movie. My, my mistake. Yeah, they made Gow- Gowls of Ghoul. <laughs> um, why not a Silverwing, Sunwing movie? All bats. I think I know why. Because bats are disgusting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> answer, my, answer my own question. <laughs> That's why they made an animated movie because then they could have some leeway with the character design. You did a real like CG movie? Yeah, it's bats are just disgusting looking even on the covers of those books like bats have like weird fucked up noses it's yeah just... but it's like as a little boy it's like yeah that's cool well, it's Batman. Like, it works as a book but as a movie it's like well you don't want to watch two hours of bats and y- you read like the third book yeah, and Sunway. it's just like this is getting really religious and fucking weird well, they go to um the underworld sun, sorry, sun Wing, sorry fire Wing. Yeah. yeah they go to like the afterlife to there's lots of Gets very weird stuff very bizarre it's it like reminds it... me of um, the Golden Compass book series, and the first one is like, oh, this is like a you know adventure. Uh, uh, it's like it has lots of religious overtones, and um, but it's like oh, they're building. Like, you got 
bears who wear armor. And it's like you're building this fantasy kind of world. Yeah. And sure enough, by the third one, the amber spyglass. Oh, no, they're in the afterlife. and So kinda, weird. And there's angels. And so it, weird. It, it, great book series, but it's yeah. like, yeah, when you start that, the, the ending point for that is like, oh, the fate of the world. And there's angels and there's all these dead people and they're in the afterlife. And Honestly... Like like I said, I don't remember much of Artemis Fowl. It never gets to that point though. No, it's always fairies and fairies and, and stuff. Goblins. You know what it honestly reminds me of? It's like Dan Brown books for kids. Yes, that's pretty much what it is. Nothing about it. it's all these like uh, lavish stories about like mysteries and secrets and well, stuff. A lot of them are like rooted in actual like I think I swear to God one of them is about like a tooth fairy or some shit. I think they're, so. They're about stuff like that where it's like, are fairies real? Let's find out. Oh, sure enough, they are real. Yeah. It's all um, crap like that. It's not until like the second or third book that they actually go down to like the gremlin world and yeah. they all live underground and stuff and I don't know. Um, so it's like... They're also kind of James Bondy. Like he's yes. this guy who has all this unlimited, limitless sums of money. Yeah. And what is he using them to do? Oh, hunt fairies. <laughs> yeah. Um but then I think he has to help them at some point. Or... Do you know who would be the perfect Artemis Fowl? Like, Artemis Fowl is supposed to be, like, 14 years old. But, I uh, think. Yeah, no, just cast Jason Schwartzman as <laughs> Artemis Fowl, who's, like, 36. But he'd be the perfect Artemis Fowl. <laughs> Give him some little gay haircut. Because uh, it's, like, I just think of, like, uh, Jason Schwartzman and, like, Rushmore when he was, like, still a teenager. But it's, like, <laughs> he's, like, 36 now. But, no, I'm cast him as Artemis Fowl, 14-year-old. Yeah, that'd be really funny. You need somebody like that to play Artemis Fowl. What? Excuse me? What? There's so many books. Yeah, I know. There's like, what, ten? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight yeah. books? I have like two, I think. and I, No, I have three? No, I have two. Um, good lord. That's crazy. Huh. Um, so Once yeah. you make a successful book, it's not like the publishers are like, hey, don't make another one. Yeah, it's They're just like, like, like make as many as you want. That. Yeah. Artemis Fowl, an Irish child prodigy and a ruthless master criminal. Artemis Fowl II uses his intelligence to build his What's family fortune name? through crime. What's the name of the author? It's like some really Irish name, isn't it? It's like uh, Oyun o- 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 Colf. Oyun Colfer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so self insert there. Um, where I want to keep reading. His description. This stems from his family, who have been criminals for generations. At first, Artemis is cold, cynical, and distant even from his closest friend and bodyguard, Butler. Uh, his bodyguard is named Butler. Throughout the series, his moral character improves, and he begins to show remorse for his actions and love for his family. Under the influence of Holly and his family, he steals only from those who deserve it and shares his loot with the public. In the first book, he kidnaps Captain Holly Short. In the first what? Book. Oh, I believe he said Burke. Did I? The first Burke? Uh, he kidnaps Captain Holly Short of the Fairy LEP, which I believe is like the, their police department or something, to obtain massive amounts of gold. He later works with fairies to defeat villains and save both the human and fairy worlds. He is noted for being very pale with raven black hair and bright blue eyes. So, yeah. Jason Schwartzman. Perfect. Indeed. Perfect role for Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> but he's like 14. Um, He's young. Sure. Youthful, youthful man. Jason uh, could pull it off. I could see that. You're talking about yourself now. Yeah. I could uh, be Artemis Fowl. <laughs> um, it, well, it's like the fact that you're amazed by how many books there are. It's like I'm sure there are people that might have read the first one or two um, series of unfortunate events. Yes, and then they went on to do thirteen. Yes, yeah, yeah, thirteen. <laughs> I stopped at eleven. Did you? Yeah. Do you want to borrow the last two? No. Why not? It, they they fall apart. Uh, they do. <laughs> <laughs> it follows a formula up until a point. It follows a formula up until the Airzats elevator, yeah. where it's like there's no more swapping hands of like, oh, now you're onto a new family. Yeah, it seemed like it was going to be that forever. They're just like, look, we're fucking done with you kids. You're on your fucking own. You can live at this hotel. It's that golden ratio thing of like the sixty six percent, and then it goes round in a spiral. You yeah, understand? Sure. You understand? Yeah, I got that. there comes a point in the series, the seventh book. Same thing with, we were talking about this a few weeks ago on the anime thing, that uh, Sakamichi no Apollon, Kids Mm -hmm. on the Slope. Kids on the Slope. Seventh episode, and then it all goes downhill. Akunohana, seventh episode, and it all goes downhill. Sort of falls upon itself. The golden ratio, 66%, would be the seventh episode. Yeah. Partway through the sixth, but no, seventh episode. The the seventh book is where everything changes in the series. Mm -hmm. That happens with a lot of things. The vile village. Everybody. The golden ratio. So what are you suggesting? That you just stop at the seventh book? 
Uh, well, no, I'm not saying... Like, plan 13 books, get to the 7th and be like, no, that's done. I, I didn't plan 13 books. Like, I probably planned, like... Lemony Snicket. That's not even his name. Is No, it's, yeah. it's his pen name. There's a whole, like, I'm actually... I'm... Well, they I insert follow a lot him. Of, they insert a lot of, like, backstory about the author. And doesn't he even... He becomes part of the story, doesn't he? Somewhat, yes. Yeah. Because uh, uh, it's like, we start wondering, well, who is this man who knows all this about the, the characters? Yeah. Uh... But it's like, yeah, it follows this the freaking orphans. They have uh, their parents get killed by this Count Olaf. Yeah, they burn and, his house down. And they go to live with this new foster family. And that keeps happening of just, like, bouncing around from, yeah. like, these weird eccentric families. And then families. there's the VFP. the or VFD. VFD, which just stands for all these things. And there's all these mysteries. And it just really doesn't even matter. And people control animals. And it's just like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. I think, actually, the 10th the book, like, I own the Slippery Slope. And I bought that, like, when it came out, and that was... You can see how, like, the thickness... Yes. Where, like, that one gets jumped. a little bit thicker. And that one is, like... They're they're in a that, circus. Yeah, that one's a hard read. That one's just, like, a lot of, okay, we'll get get to the top. Get to the top of the mountain already. Oh, and now we're sliding down the, the mountain. Get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> oh, good night. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that one just drags on. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that series kind of fizzled out. It and did. Oh, and it didn't help that the movie came out, and the movie didn't flop. But the they were they got a guy who doesn't like doing sequels. Yeah. Um, but no. So yeah, this Artemis Fowl seemed to conclude with Artemis Fowl, the Last Guardian. So I don't know. It'll be uh, very interesting Look if they're going to forward do... to that. Wes Anderson, Jason Schwartzman, Artemis Fowl, <laughs> produced by the Weinstein's. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's like I'll probably see that movie out of morbid curiosity. But I just don't see it doing well. And it's like, will that be another thing of just Disney going, well, let's not bet on these big movies well, anymore? Well, I don't think they'll have a budget like the other ones. No. Like, let's just give it this, like, 40 or something. Which is weird, because, like, this is a movie that's going to rely so much on just, like, CG bullshit. Uh, if you think of all, like, the Dobby stuff and all the Gringotts thing in Harry Potter, it's like, all that, it's like, it's that's what this movie is going to be, pretty much. It's like, good luck. Good luck having... A hundred million. Yeah, get get, <laughs> get Matt Roloff to play the play the fairies. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> well, Gringotts. That was what's it? That was the little Willow Man. <laughs> that was that was the guy. I know, from, I know. Yeah, 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 he played the Gringot dude. Yeah, um, yeah. Dobby was all CGI. He was a tennis ball, but uh, <laughs> Matt Roloff has been in movies before. Has he? I'm almost certain he has. Matt Roloff. Let me look this up. Internet hero. Um. Matt Roloff, IMDb. He had a DUI. <laughs> so I just look at his uh, IMDb sure yeah. picture. <laughs> he looks uh, very sharp there. Yeah, I love that guy. I used to watch that show all the time. There's like 200 episodes of that show. Uh, he was in Ewoks, The Battle for Endor, yeah, the TV I movie. That's what I thought. Uh, Under the Rainbow as the hotel rainbow guest. Little people, little people. There was work in that if they, for midgets in Hollywood. Uh, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, he was on. Well, that was not. That yeah, was he, probably for his, his Little show. Big Planet. Yeah, <laughs> Little Big Planet. <laughs> no other movies, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just remember it said that he was an actor, and I remember him on the show talking about like being in movies before. Yeah. Um, like, like he was no stranger to like. There's always camera crews following him around. Yeah. They they had like a big pumpkin patch. I saw that they had like a a spinoff series after a little big a little big planet <laughs> and uh little big people it was called like little people big world like wedding farm oh, and i was like what? what i was like what do you mean wedding farm i don't remember this like look on it it's like now they're wedding planners and they're planning weddings so i'm like for little people i don't know man i didn't watch it <laughs> they have this they have like this huge property so it's like oh for people that might be fans of the show or people so that... it's a regular sized house is what you're saying yeah, well, they they have here's Sorry, enough, here, for the people who did not watch our Demon Souls thing, um, for whatever reason, because Jason says something about like he rolled Roll. off, yeah. and I go, oh, Matt, roll off. <laughs> and they keep and, and saying it. I didn't it. explain it, but then I explain it in the next episode about who Matt Roloff is. So yeah. now I'm doing it again. There's a show on TLC called Little People Big World, and it was about Matt and Amy Roloff, these two um, little people, these two midgets that fell in love and they had kids. Now their first kid is a regular sized human that would be so weird that's, for them that's why this show exists it's weird it's that's just like oh the baby keeps growing and oh the baby's well, bigger that, than that, us yeah that happens it's a, but they have the oldest one is regular yes and then they have another kid who's a midget 
<laughs> and then they have another daughter who's regular, and then they have another kid who's regular, the youngest kid. But there's one of them that's a midget too. Oh, there's just one. Yeah, that's they've, they've, exactly. It's a weird show. Um, okay, I have to look this up now. What's it called? Little Big Planet. Little People. Big World. Big World. You divorce? To... No, they're not getting divorced. Oh. I go to Google Images. Uh, Google Images. I think there was talks of like perhaps they were getting a divorce or something because. He said like DUI problems and yeah. stuff like that. Or just such a that's so interesting. Yeah, that's why it's a good <clears> show. <throat> that's I, I can understand now. <laughs> it's like those all came out of her. I can see that. Yeah, it's all C sections, so they can. Yeah, the, a regular birth would kill. Why would one. they keep having kids then? Because kids are uh, life lifeblood of the world. Do you think the the three little ones secretly hate the three regular ones? It's the other way around, I think. That they resent the what rest if of you the grew family? up with midget parents? Come on, how would you not? How would you not be like a little like? You would never bring people home, Mike, would you? I don't know. <laughs> These are my parents. <clears throat> it's like that fucking Tiptoes movie with Gary <laughs> Oldman, freaking Matthew McConaughey. What are you? What are you doing? The the little boy who is also a little person yeah. of the family. I showed you the picture. Was dating a little girl. I know that. I watched <clears throat> that episode. They have like places where it's just like. All of them gather together. Yeah, they and they don't let the the regular f- part of the family into the. They can come, but it's not really for them. It's like yeah. it's basically a midget gathering where it's like, hey, my midget daughter, meet your midget son. They literally do that. Like it's like a courtship sort of thing. This is the it's, weirdest. It's hard for them. I to can meet understand. Yes, <laughs> but still, this is just the weirdest thing. Um, but no, there's a movie Tiptoes, which <clears throat> yeah. is they've done on how this get made, where Gary Oldman plays a midget and Matthew McConaughey plays his twin brother. You know, there's like a 20 year age difference between them, and they're both uh, regular size. Yeah, well, yeah, Gary Oldman's <laughs> on his knees for the whole time. Yeah, uh, but they have like midget gatherings on that too. Uh, that's like my favorite how did this get made episode. Uh, just Tiptoes, such a ridiculous concept. Um, that movie went to like Cannes and stuff. Cause yeah. I thought, and that movie just ends. I watched a little bit of that movie, mm-hmm. but it's basically about this. I'm sorry. I'm just like looking at photos of this family, and it's just so bizarre. Yeah, yeah. interesting. It's like, it's like it was an interesting show to watch. It's about their life. They have a huge farm. Like they grow pumpkins, basically. So it's a big pumpkin farm. Yeah. There's also like, like I said, there's like a western town that he, the dad built. Um, yeah, I see that. Uh, Weird. They all have like health problems too. That. That, that's common that happens like even the regular no no, no they, they don't have all the problems no. they're regular <laughs> <laughs> what they're right re- like you said they're regular they don't have health problems. okay but no like the the little the little boy the yes. little midget boy he yes. has like a shunt so he's got like a, a shunt <laughs> it means he gets fluid build up in his brain Ooh. so there's like a thing where they Ooh. they they drain it out Ooh. yeah <clears throat> and then there was like a trebuchet accident and <laughs> Um, that's on like the Wikipedia page. I remember that episode too. One of them gets hurt in the trebuchet and he needs like surgeries. The one of one. the regulars is just like, let's put, let's put them in the trebuchet. Pretty much. What? I know. It's just like, they have a trebuchet. Cause like I said, the dad likes building Cause things. Cause they're Daryl foot. What was that word? Daryl <laughs> foot. <laughs> Um, yeah, they build, the dad just likes building things. Like he's yeah. one of those guys who it's like, despite my size, I still like, you know, he just does everything a regular person. You can drive a car and shit. Yeah. He has like a, and the, watching them drive too. It's like, Jason, picture that in your head. How do they drive? Do they have like, uh, wooden things that they like? No, they don't have wooden that, things. That they extend their legs. <laughs> yeah, they legs. have little, little two by fours. <laughs> yeah. No, they have like a hand acceleration thing. Oh. So kind of like, yeah, and they've kind of... Interesting. They, you have to, like, fix a car so it works for a li- little person, but it's, like, <clears throat> the same way a motorcycle has those the same way you use it with yeah. your hands. Even their hands are weird, though. Jacob Roll from family thing. friend Mike Detjen were seriously injured yeah. in an accident on the family farm on Saturday, October 20th, 2006. They were injured, but when the family's trebuchet, which they used to launch pumpkins as part of the pumpkin season promotion, mm-hmm. prematurely ejaculated. I mean, triggered. <laughs> um, interesting. They basically, like, whapped one of them. <laughs> yeah. And he had, well, two of them. But he had the fluid build up before that, but then he had, like, I don't know. He had, like, a thing with, like, a bladder thing. I don't know. There's lots of problems. Good Lord, I feel bad for this family. Yeah, and the the Matt Roloff, he's, like, he does, like, inspirational talks because it's, like, 
Hey, despite despite my chicken drumstick looking like a complex. <laughs> that's, um, a, that's another guy, actually. That's a different guy. Um, that guy has more problems. No, but he's like... That, I love that guy. Matt Roloff, like, the way he grew up, he had, like, so many surgeries, and he was basically, like, never able to leave the house because you wow. had problems with, like, your knees, your problems with your joints, joint problems, back problems. Yes. So that's why he is the way he is. Like, he does inspirational talks. Like, look yeah. what I was able to accomplish, even though I'm like this. <laughs> um, but it was a good show. Huh. So interesting. Little people, big world cast. I guess. No, it's called like Bioshock cast or something. Um, do you want to? How much? How long have we been recording this for? Exactly an hour. So, do you want to end with talking about the Phil Fish thing? Oh, okay. Just yeah, sort of wrap up with that because that. uh, that's been a big thing, especially it's like doing what we do and myself being a game developer. It's like very interesting things been going on in the industry um, this past week. Uh, if, for those that don't know, there's Phil Fish, who's a prominent indie developer. He did the game prominent, Fez. Prominent merman. Prominent merman. Um, <laughs> Little people, big ocean. <laughs> <laughs> TLC? Um, Elon Musk, if you're listening to this and you make that fucking show next week, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, people, big ocean. Um, this movie that came out, Indie Game the Movie, people, a very popular documentary. A lot of people have seen that. Yeah. Uh, one of the stars of that, they had Phil Fish, they had Jonathan Blow, and they had Edmund McMillan. Yeah. Those were the kind of three stars. And guys also, who did Super Meat Boy, guy who did Fez, guy who did... Yeah, so Phil Fish did Fez. Yeah. Jonathan Blow did Braid, and Edmund McMillan did... Meat Boy and a more, bunch of others. Binding of Isaac. Yeah, is that's a big more, one too. More popular than I wa- I watched an entire Let's Play of there's a guy Northern Line who has like 400 um, Binding of Isaac Let's Play. Can plays. I just say one thing? Yeah. I found someone who did a Let's Play of Mini Morphs. Oh, that's weird. I'm not even joking. <laughs> it's just this like 10 year old boy, and it I I, I couldn't watch it because it's like watching an old videotape of you doing a play because it's just like oh god okay close. But anyways, uh, no, I was watching. Uh, like I'm, I'm kind of getting into like not making live streams, but watching live streams. Yeah. This is a recording of a live stream. It's the new thing. That's gonna be the next big thing. It's, it's like, entertaining. It uh, is. I was watching Evo, and I watched the guys do the San Andreas thing. It, it depends on the game. Depends on who it is. Um, I get really into StarCraft like live streams. Those are fun. They were. Who was just talking about that? It, it was uh, indoor kids were just talking about how, uh, <laughs> like, no, it was League of Legends. It's the same kind of thing. Same. Yeah. Uh, but it's like how technical it is. Like you can't really, if you don't really know the game, you can't really just tune into that. Cause no. it's just like, oh, if they don't get the Zerg Oh, they did the four game rush. They're going to go with the bottom. Yeah, it's like, what is going on? <laughs> but at the same time, I was watching Evo and I know enough about, like I've watched fighting. I follow a few yeah. fighting game people on YouTube and I've played enough fighting games. So I was watching. A little them. more accessible. Uh, to get well, into. Even that, like they were doing, it was the finals of Super Street Fighter 4. And I just mean the sense of like, if someone does a big combo, even I can like appreciate that. Well, yeah, you that. can watch like, two people fighting it's easy to tell who wins yeah when, stuff like that but uh no they were just like one guy was playing as this character hakan who's new to st- street fighter or super street fighter yes um but he's like the big oil wrestler and the thing <laughs> have you seen him like he's all red and stuff no. uh but the thing about him is like he has this thing where he can oil himself and he's, <laughs> he's a better he's a better fighter when he's oiled but when the oil runs out he's not he gets all dry so, and crusty uh who was the guy using it was was it Balrog? I think it was Balrog versus Hakan. Mm-hmm. But um, like the good, like the best counter to Balrog is Hakan. So that's why he used him. Even though that wasn't the fighters, like that's not who he's trained with. Yeah. But it's like he has to do it to counter Balrog. So he uses Hakan even though he's not like a pro with Hakan. Yeah. So he uses Hakan, and the whole time the commentators are talking about like the oil and stuff. It's like oh, the oil's about to run out. Oh no, I did a full oil, and it's just like everybody was going wild. It was, <laughs> you're watching this guy who's a pro fighter, but not a pro with Hakan. Yeah. But still using Hakan to beat this guy who was like the best Balrog player on the planet. Oh man. Um but watching like the chat just go crazy with those freaking Kappa faces. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have special Evo Kappa, so there's yeah. one with like the Ryu headband and one with the Sagat eye patch. I was like the one guy who's like I can't even describe his face, but he's just this like Yeah, like the yeah. like, Kappa's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about are you talk about the other one, the bald guy? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Okay, now. Kappa's like the guy who just looks like a regular white guy with like black hair. I think it might be, or okay. he just looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that, that is that's him. him. That's Kappa. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. had a, a Ryu headband. He's one of the guys who works for Twitch, and he yeah. has like a Sagat um, eye patch. But everybody kept on shouting "fraud" to "fraud's" one of them. So it's just yes, like, it is Kappa. Yeah, <laughs> fraud, fraud, fraud. Would uh, but yeah, watching Evo was a lot of fun. Watching the 
Grand Theft Auto live stream, which I think I talked about on here already. Completely beside the point. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to say my goddamn Binding of Isaac. I watched yeah. Northern Lion do a 45-minute <laughs> run of Binding of Isaac, and he p- pretty much picked the worst character who has, like, one health to start off with. Um, and you need to get Hard health. mode. Yeah, you, it's uh, Judas. Um and you need to get like health upgrades for him and he wasn't getting them and the whole chat kept him telling him to go into the cursed rooms and the way the cursed rooms work is there's spikes going into the door so Mm -hmm. you go in there and you take damage and when you leave you take damage yeah and they kept him saying go in the cursed rooms even though he has one heart he would die yeah so he would die so they kept suggesting the cursed rooms and you get these things called spirit hearts which buff your health Mm -hmm. so he could do it and they kept on saying like curse from when he couldn't and then when he could like curse room curse room he's like no no i'm not gonna do curse room and then finally when he does do a curse room he gets a really good item and uh, everybody all the chat's going wild but no it was like this like really unlucky run because he wasn't getting health and everybody kept on saying do curse room and he managed to go from start to finish like in 45 minutes and beat the whole thing wow on this like shitty character and just, like, <clears throat> he wasn't getting good luck until the end that's not co-op in any way is it what's that word co-op co-op is it no oh, single player only that sucks that would be a fun game to uh co-op but mugenics it's a new game maybe, anyways maybe that's co-op phil, phil fish. fish uh one of the indie- binding of isaac made by edmund mcmillan from indie game the movie also starring phil fish marcus beer is a man who works for game trailers he's a former game developer he's worked on many shitty 90s PC titles, titles that I can't mention because yeah. I don't know them off. He worked on, there was a game from a few years ago called Operation Blacklight. Remember oh, that? I know that. It was like a $15. Just, just shitty game. Yeah, he worked on that because I remember he left. He was like a regular guest on Game Trailer's podcast, Invisible Walls, mm-hmm. and he had to leave for a bit. To go. He had his own segment called like Grumpy Gamer or something, and he yeah. had to end up changing it because there was already a Grumpy Gamer. So and the Game Grumps? Yeah, well, that was long after, but he's the Annoyed Gamer. So he has his own show on game trailers called The Annoyed Gamer, yeah. where he just rants about things. Um, but no, he was on the Invisible Walls podcast, and they were talking about the fact that the Xbox One mm-hmm. initially was said to not, you can't, not going to support indie games. It's going to be different than the, X, than the Xbox. Yeah. And then they later went on to said just recently that... Um, indie developers can self-publish on the xbox 360 meaning they don't need to go through Microsoft a publisher and... yeah they don't need to go through getting a publisher or any of that yeah you can just self-publish um which is huge like it's similar to that's what the apple store does you, yes. as long as you have an apple developer thing you can submit to uh, um apple and be on the app store so you're, you're ultimately you're only paying out to apple you're not paying out to anyone else which yeah. is you don't need, you don't need ea or some <clears throat> company to help you get into the store it's self-publishing yeah. so that's very good but the terms and the details of that haven't been released yet because it's goddamn Microsoft and it's goddamn Xbox. Why would they release the details? Why would they tell consumers? It's like the the developers know. And that's the thing. The developers know. So Marcus Beer was like ba- bashing um, people like Jonathan Blow and mm-hmm. Phil Fish for not coming out and telling the public what the details of this work because they would know because they're indie developers and they're both developing things. Yeah. They're it's like they, they neither of them have announced games for the Xbox One. Jonathan so, Blow is doing the, the Witness, but that's, the Witness. PS, that's PS4 only, isn't it? No, is that everything? I think that's everything. Okay, well they just showed it at the PS4 conference. Yeah. So I know it is coming to PS4, but uh, let me double check. I don't want to be wrong with that. Up the Witness, Jonathan Blow. Uh, Follow up to Braid. Yeah. Jonathan Blow. Um, maybe. Maybe it is only PC, iOS, and PlayStation 4. My mistake. Yeah. Maybe it's not on uh, Xbox One. Yeah. Interesting. Who's to say? Um, time will tell. But Marcus Beer was, like, doing a call to arms saying, like, the developers should come out and tell the consumers, you know, what the details of this are so we can all know. It's like, um, why, why does it matter? And he specifically called out Jonathan <clears throat> Blow and Phil Fish. Phil Fish. And the reason he does it is because... These guys are kind of the face of indie gaming, thanks to Indie Game the Movie. But it's yeah. like, nobody has come up with this information, and it's nobody's obligation to reveal this to the public. And mm-hmm. Microsoft isn't... Re- and we don't even... They, perhaps they don't know the terms of it. But he was also calling out Phil Fish for being for being whiny and doing all these attacks on this podcast to a guy he doesn't know yeah. and only knows publicly. Um, and Phil Fish responded <clears throat> to that 
uh, he started tweeting at game trailers because he heard about this. Yeah. And it was like this unwarranted attack towards Phil Fish from a guy he doesn't know yeah. from a reputable game website as like Kotaku would never put a piece where it was like just a, a hate filled piece towards a game developer. No. Um, they wouldn't. Yeah, and that's what Phil Fish was ask, asking for a retraction from game trailers or a public apology yeah, from public game trailers apology, right? because it was this unwarranted attack yeah. on their like official podcast um, just to, aimed at Phil Fish out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and they it, it, it could have done – all game trailers had to do was just like, hey, the opinions of Marcus Beer don't reflect game trailers. We're sorry if he may have offended you with any of that kind of yeah. stuff. But no, they stood by their man. The game trailers community stood by their man. Yeah. Or they didn't address the problem. Um, but then the two of them started fighting, and it's so weird how quickly people will go against – Phil Fish, because all he said was like, people don't like the line that Phil Fish had to Marcus Beer said, look at your life and compare it to mine and then kill yourself. Which one quote from Futurama, uh, Bender says that uh, um, it was it out of line. Perhaps the idea of kill yourself, it's like has taken on its own context. And I think wasn't appropriate. But it, and to me, it was like. This is a guy who feels cornered and feels attacked and he's yes. lashing out. This he didn't go out of his way to attack Marcus Beer and game trailers. No. This is a guy who's under a constant barrage of people playing his game and bashing him. Yeah. People watching Indie Game the movie and then taking it out on him. Yeah. Like uh I just want to look up a quote from somebody else before I You don't have internet. Fucking hell. Just look up what Cliff Blazinski came out and said re- recently. Um Right. Because it led to Phil Fish announcing that he was going to cancel Fez 2, his new game, um, and he's going to leave game development forever. Because yes. this is a guy who is under constant attack from everybody. And the game industry is such a terrible industry filled with people that are like filled with such malice. And we've been on the end of that before. Oh, yeah. The we, game industry is filled with people who... Entitled people th- little kids. They, they throw around the word entitled a lot. And I'm not sure if it's so much that, but people... <sighs> It's weird. People just expect different things from entertainment. And someone was comparing, I think it was Kotaku comparing it to sports, where it's like, here are these people putting themselves out there, and yet they get, get attacked like no one else, even though it's entertainment. It's people not like, like Wongo for the Canucks, where it's like yeah, being blamed for everything, when it's like, no, it's a team sport. And even something, and I was trying to say, I put a comment on Kotaku, and I posted a picture of Shel Silverstein's... Um, picture which you can all look up called the thinker of tender thoughts yeah and that i i feel like people like phil fish should be revered and respected these are people that he's somebody who went out of his time and devoted his life to creating this one project and something that adds this beauty and this insight to the world in fez and although he may be an eccentric opinionated person i think people like him should be treated with some degree of respect much more than he's given yeah um especially and i was trying to say that I would rather live in a world filled with people like Phil Fish than people like Marcus Beer, who only seek to detract from people that are creating things. Yeah, it, it's it's unfortunate, and it's like I hope he comes back. Um, cause it's like Phil Fish has been known to say things of just like how he hates the gaming community, how it's like oh J- Japanese, Japanese developers yeah. just aren't good anymore. Like he says these things that's like. Okay, it's like maybe you shouldn't, but I can't find. I know the quote you're talking about, but all the articles are there, like Cliff Bazinski going on. But he was pretty much saying that there's not enough game developers that um, say what they need to say. That Just the game development Cl- search Cliff Bazinski, Phil Fish, Kotaku because I know they have the. I know it's on quote. yeah the Kotaku one. Just Google that is what I'm saying. Um, put up on my phone if I have to. I yeah. get that exact quote. I don't want to paraphrase, dude. Huge. <clears throat> he'll take out his chainsaw and he'll kill us. He will kill us. Oh, that's. I'll get it. You vamp. Um, I'll get it. You vamp. Yeah. But uh, it's like, as a game developer myself, it it's true. I think there's a lot of people who, I, I don't know, they just, they love to attack games and game developers. And I think it's because it's easy that as an entertainment medium, it's like, they can attack this because it's what they know compared to like actual hard issues out there, you know, like politics or religion or like shitty stuff it's like no we'll we'll do the easy thing we'll attack the people who entertain us because that's just that's the easiest way um but yeah it's just it's a really shitty deal i think they were they were both too heated they both said things that they didn't need to say ultimately well and marcus beer is just like a belligerent asshole and that's what well, he's that's his thing to, yeah and it's like people are talking about him now and that's all he was trying to do is trying to get out of um get a rise out of 
Uh, here it is. Oh, I just found it too. Weird. Yeah, well, I just searched it, and it's like, of course this is it. Yeah. Let's go wait for it to load. iOS 7, everybody. Gotta get that on your phone. Yeah. Um, Slow as fuck. No. Um, and if you haven't played Fez yet, it's a very beautiful game. I haven't had a chance to play it because I keep waiting for it to come out on PS3, and it's like, maybe it never will, which is unfortunate. Um, Could have bought it. I love the soundtrack, though. Beautiful soundtrack. Do you want me to just read it? I've got it right here. Yeah, I got it. You can keep Silence. vamping while I get it. Silence, everyone. I know. I'm seeing you can vamp while I do this. Everyone. I don't know how often I vamp while you're looking something up, but you took too long. The industry needs people like you to speak with their hearts before their brains, because I'm tired of hearing the PR-approved appropriate response. Come back, Phil. We miss you already. And that's from lead creator of Gears of War, Cliff Blazinski, a very prominent figure, one of the most prominent sort of people in gaming. I was going to say a very prominent figure in terms of like, he speaks what he wants to speak. Yeah. Like he, he reminds me of the video games, um, Ricky Gervais of just like always on Twitter, just like sometimes saying things that a lot of people maybe won't approve, but he's a guy who like understands where Phil Fish is coming from and gives him the respect that he deserves it. Here's a guy who poured his heart and soul and his time and his energy, his money into this one thing to create something for people to play. Yeah. Um, and it's like he's clearly a different man for having embarked on creating something like Fez. He's a very like, yes depressed it, man. Yeah, he's not without <laughs> his own faults. But knowing that, watching that movie and seeing this guy who's mm-hmm. clearly not disturbed, but with not without his own problems, seeing that movie and somebody like Marcus Beer like goading that goading that type of person on, it's like yeah. you wouldn't go like if Picasso was still alive, you wouldn't be like, Hey Picasso, you fight just like try to provoke him and get a, get in a Twitter fight with Picasso. I'm not yeah. saying Phil Fish is Picasso, but it's like artists are artists, let them do their thing. Yeah. Um people like Marcus Beer add nothing to nope. anything. It's like what what purpose does this guy serve just to rile people up and just fuel the internet hate machine? It's pretty like, much. I, That's I it. I don't support that whatsoever. So I wanted to talk about that on the podcast. I, yeah. I I was very pleased to see that Cliffy B came out and said this. Dude Huge came out and supported. Yeah. Um, the the full thing that like his full letter was just talking about how like journalists out there do this. They they do this to get a rise out of people because it gives them a story, it gives them clicks, it gives them views, and it makes them money. And it's just like that's that's the worst thing. And it's like you're saying they add nothing. Not one thing. Cliff, Cliff also said the full thing is, I'm tired of games that feel like they've been developed by focus groups or clueless executives going, hey, that Call of Duty is big. We need one of those. Besides, at the end of the day, that cycle of community feedback and crafting that big fireball is entirely too addictive. Come back, Phil. We miss you already. Maybe I'll be right behind you returning with adamantium skin. Yeah, because he's been off for a year now. Well, and that's what he's saying. Like... He's specifically saying he doesn't like focus groups and clues executives in Call of Duty. And you think of Gears of War, it's like he got sick of that. It's like, although yeah. it brought him success, it brought him money. It's like, that's not the games that he wants to be making for the rest of his career. No. So, yeah, very interesting times. Um, it'll be curious to see just like what actually happens with the next generation. Cause it's like, hey, Sony... wait, you're a game developer. Hey, you douchebag. Why don't you tell us about the Xbox one specs? Can you self publish? Yes. Fucking, yes. You whiny little bitch. Can't you fucking self? Can you, how you fucking tell... twat pot? You yeah. fu- it's just like, what? Why? I want to see, I just want to see the two of them fight, but I want, um, I want Phil fish to have one of the, the gears of war guns with the chainsaws on it. Cut, cut them in half. Cut them, cut them up. Dude, that's brutal. Dude, huge. Fuck fucking Marcus Beer. I used to listen to Invisible Walls and I stopped because I hate the editor-in-chief of Game Trailers is this guy, Shane Satterfield. Yes. And he's just the most cynical guy in the world. You hear him talk about video games. There's no love there. He doesn't love video games. That's what I'm talking about. It's like people who review movies, people who review games and stuff, like for some reason I I can't understand this except for what I was saying where attacking entertainment stuff is just the easiest thing that the human brain like loves the path of least resistance and that's just that's enough of a problem for them that they can complain about it but they don't actually have to like think too hard yeah, it is well like film critics they got to be more like uh more like greg turkington and tim heidecker just gotta love movies gotta go to cinema and love just love it have love in your hearts everybody yeah and remember this valentine's day get something sweet for your sweetheart um buy it now it's super able to play best of dvd on... best of dvd we got 100 episodes all on, episodes on that vhs we're gonna it, be bring it to you live yeah buy it for your loved ones and 
Even the deceased can enjoy this. 